everybody, welcome back. If you are a returning viewer, welcome if you are new. My name is Addy and this is the Knits by AJ Knitting Podcast. I am a knitter and a stay-at-home mum from the southeast of the UK and this is kind of just where I come to chat about my knitting. So I first of all want to start off by saying Happy New Year. This is the first podcast of 2024, which like I have no idea where 2023 went. <laughs> the last like three months of it kind of just flew on by but here we are and um this is like episode nine which is insane so yeah um apologies if everything like last week I feel like not last week last episode I feel like I was a little bit kind of not with it and I've now realized that that was because I was getting sick so my husband had the dreaded C virus um, over Christmas and then I thought that me and my daughter had managed to get away with not getting it um, and then I got it over New Year so he had like tested negative and everything was fine and then obviously I came down with it and it was just it was unpleasant but you know such is life um, I hope you all had a wonderful new year and celebrated in whatever way you choose to celebrate. Um, I have got one finished object, a couple of whips and some acquisitions and um, also some swatches to show today. I'm bringing back the swatches um, and yeah, I'm really excited to get into 2024. I've also got some like knitting goals to talk through for 2024. I thought that might be like today might be a good time to sort of talk through some of those and then I can look back at the end of the year and see how many of them I actually managed to stick to. Um, if you've been here for a while you know that I am completely incapable of making long-term plans when it comes to my knitting. Um, I'm very much a see a pattern, immediately fall in love with it and want to cast it on. So we shall see how, they're quite broad but I'll get to those at the end. As always, everything will be timestamped down below. So if you want to skip through to something or you want to skip back, then you have the ability to do so. Um, and yeah, so we shall kick off with actually what I'm wearing today. So this is the Ink and Brass Pullover by Danny Sunshine. And I knit this up in... San Nesgan Tin Pier Gint in the colours, I think this is like forest green and white. Um, I'll have the product, product? No, I'll have the project page um, linked down below and um, anything else that I talk about will also be linked down below um, if you do want to go and check it out. Right. Let's get into my first finished object. I'm all over the place today, as always. I'm actually filming this on a Monday, and I usually film on a Tuesday, so, and I think this is like the fifth time I've started this, so we'll see how this goes. So, um, <laughs> yes, my first finished object is my Turtle Dove Shawl by Sari Nordland, and here she is in all of her neon pink glory. Um, I knit this up out of Phil Kalana Saga and Tilia, both in the colour Peach Blossom. And this is like almost too big to fit in frame. I have to, I have to do this. There we go. Um, right. <laughs> so um, Phil Kalana Saga is a woolen spun yarn and then obviously I use strand of mohair. So this is quite honestly the lightest garment. It almost feels like I'm holding nothing. Um, and that is mainly because this whole thing weighs, sorry, I'm also looking down here because my laptop is here with all of my notes. So apologies if I'm looking down here um, a lot. Um, yes, right, there we go. So this entire shawl weighs 59 grams. So it's just, it's, it's like a feather. Um, so I use 34 grams of the Saga and I use the whole ball, so a 25 gram ball of um, Tilia. And it's so, like, the drape is beautiful. Um, this was um, Sari Nordland's, like, um, what do you call it? Mystery Knit Along 
for December and I started off really, really well, um, caught up with the clues. And then, well, actually, no, first I had problems getting the yarn, which I've spoken about before. And then obviously I caught up with all the clues and I was up to date until I think clue two and then give me a thing right in the way like I said last week and it just sat but I did manage to get this finished up between Christmas and New Year and it was my last cast off of 2023 and yeah I'm just I'm so here I'll pop it on I'm so happy with it I feel like I really need this now because it was today was the first day that I um, ended up doing the school run again Ooh and it was bitterly cold it was like two degrees which i know may not seem all that cold for people who live in colder com uh, countries but it is cold here i'm still unsure as to how to wear this like that kind of seems like the kind of best option i don't know i can only really see myself in the viewfinder so we'll see but anyway um so the wingspan of this is about one meter and the depth is about 30 centimeters i didn't quite get the full depth um, my gauge was a little bit off at the beginning. Um, I think, well, I was, I, the first like third of this is quite tight, the gauge. And then after that, it's kind of loosened up. So it is a little bit off on the, when I was blocking it, I managed to get the full wingspan because I wanted the length obviously to be able to wrap it around. But I um, lost a little bit in the depth. I haven't actually got my tape measure up here, so I'm not sure. But yeah, it's not far off. It's not far off. Yeah. Um, either way, I'm not really all that fussed because as you will see later, I do have another shawl on the needles, which is much, much bigger and will fulfill that kind of criteria. Whereas this is just perfect to be able to just pop it underneath my jacket, a little pop of color and, you know, brighten up January with a bit of hot pink. Um, I used the recommended 3.5 millimeter needles and I did not swatch. And I kind of went off of the, so if you've watched previous episodes, you'll know that I knit a, well, I've just kind of finished up um, a couple of weeks ago, a wood anemone pullover by Sari Nordland. And I got, obviously swatched for that and got gauge with the same needles that she used. And so because of that, I then chose to use the same needles as um, she recommended in the pattern. And... I think that's worked out perfectly well because I've like I didn't really want a massively dense fabric. This is really sort of squishy and drapey, um, and like but then obviously warm enough that I'm not going to need multiple layers of it to keep me warm. And obviously it's a woolen spun yarn and a mohair. And from what I I mean I'm not an expert, as you all probably all know if you've been here for a while. I'm not an expert in anything, but um, woolen spun is supposed to be. It's, supposed, it's the one way it traps more air when it's spun and so it's lighter and it holds more air so it's warmer as well yeah I think that's right correct me if I'm wrong um so yeah it means that it's not only really light but also it is much warmer than just a woolen spun yarn and a mohair on its own so yeah I used all of the mohair and I'm not sure if you'll actually be able to, I mean to be honest even I can't tell but one of these does not have mohair this is not going to want to focus is it yeah so one of the ends does not have mohair on like the last two rows and ev yeah even I can't tell which one it is and it's because I ran out before the last two rows which is just like the bind off and like the end of the kind of like double knit border so I think it might be that one but yeah I mean not a problem so you definitely can knit this out of one ball of mohair I think the pattern recommends having two or like having one that's using a mohair that's slightly more kind of generous on yardage I can't actually remember how much how many meters there are in a ball of tilia and i don't have the ball band with me i'll pop it up here somewhere so yeah i'll i'll pop up sort of like what the pattern recommends for the mohair and how much you get in a ball of tilia because i have conveniently forgotten to put that in my notes but yeah really happy with this in the end i did get gauge um 
on the latter half but obviously like I said the first half is a bit tighter but not really a problem I mean you could never never like ne never never <laughs> you could never really notice um and yeah I think I think this is going to be really useful in the coming months so it's an all over cable pattern with these like oh can't hold things today with these like zigzag twisted stitches and bobbles and yeah I pop it on because it's not not all that warm but yeah I, feel, I like the fact that you barely even notice it wearing this because it is so light as well so I'm not I'm not the best shawl wearer I don't I think this is the first shawl I've ever knit but yeah that is my Turtle Dove shawl by Sari Nordland and um yeah really happy with it I say I'm really happy with everything because to be perfectly honest if I'm not really happy with it then um, I probably would have frogged it and never finished it so you know and that has happened so that is all of my finished objects I've spent kind of like the I just wanted to clear my needles at the end of 2023 and so I haven't really been casting on a ton of stuff so I've got two whips one of them you have seen before and one of them you have not um, and yes I think yeah so I was going to talk about my Christmas socks very very briefly in the kind of whip section of this um, I have put them into kind of like hibernate until the end of the year now because I'm not going to get them finished and I want to knit other socks so I, th I kind of just have fallen out of love with them briefly so they're just going to hibernate for a little while so they won't be coming back until later on in the year but I did obviously finish one sock and yeah I just yeah they'll, they'll be back anyway so my first whip is the Daft Day Shawls by Daft Day Shawls Daft Days Shawl by Rebecca Clow of the Craya Bayer um, and I am knitting this up out of the Lonely Knitters 2023 advent um, which was the Journey to the Dark Side Star Wars advent and so far I have done days one to six well I'm in day 16 so I suppose day one to 15 plus one row of day 16 because I managed to do that fit that in last night um, and I have not sewn in my ends as I've gone so it's a bit of a mess I'm not sure how I'm going to show this either because it is huge absolutely huge so here if I fold this in half there we go so here we are Ooh. there we go <laughs> this is I'm gonna I think I will try and film some b-roll of this like in its full entirety because it's so difficult to show um I think to like fold it to the point where I can actually show you all of the colors and everything because it's insanely big so here we have day one and two three four five yeah that was five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve no I've, I've gone even I can't see it the fade is so good on this and I think I, yeah so it shows up way more kind of stripey on camera than it does in real life it's definitely like all of the colors are way more kind of continuous um in real life I'm not really sure why the camera decides to make it more stripey it does not show it in its best light but yeah I think that's probably going to be the easiest way to show all of them so yeah I mean I'm just kind of carrying on with this really like it each row is now like almost 500 stitches long it is so many stitches it's a fingering weight shawl um and I'm using 3.75 millimeter needles which is two sizes bigger than the recommended the recommended are 3.25 um but I mean, I think my gauge is pretty much on. I did not knit a swatch. And um, to be honest, it was mainly because I knew that this was going to be a massive shawl anyway. And I'm not sure how much I'm going to really wear this as a proper shawl. It depends really kind of like how I can 
style it when I've finished. It's probably more so going to be more like a blanket type shawl that we end up using kind of as and when we need it. And I'm more than happy with that because I just want to make, I just, I wanted a pattern that was going to let my advent shine. This is the first time I've got a yarn advent and I'm absolutely in love with it. Um, so yeah, I've got nine colours left to put in this and this is already, so I filmed my like bi-weekly whip parade and I lay this out on the bed and I'll, Bed. And we have a king size bed and it's like almost the point where it's like tip to tip um across the bed so it is already huge um <clears throat> and I've obviously not blocked this yet and it's like a slip stitch pattern let me see if I can give you a close up so yeah it's a slip stitch pattern which I think is just gonna like grow as it's blocked and because this is like a super wash merino nylon blend it's gonna it's gonna grow and like I say I'm more than happy with that like the bigger the better because I'd like for it to be something that we can kind of snuggle up underneath and then we can also just wrap around ourselves like we're going on holiday um to the beach and it'd be nice if it if it's like a bit windy um then we can just sort of wrap up underneath it whilst we sit on the beach and that kind of thing so yeah the um so my current gauge is 24 stitches and 31 rows per 10 centimeters at its current unblocked state and the pattern gauge is 22 stitches and 29 rows so I don't think it's completely I mean I think mine might end up being a little bit bigger um than like on gauge than the pattern suggests but like I say not a problem um but yeah I've done one row of colour 16 um, which I probably won't be able to see but yeah I think last time I don't know I don't know where I was last time I probably should have checked this but yeah um, I'm following somebody else's instructions on how many rows to do so I'm currently in like where the bits where the rows the amount of rows is getting smaller per colour um, and I've got tiny tiny scraps of some of them and my initial plan was to use the leftovers to make a daft days cardigan but I'm not going to have enough yarn to do that so my now my plan now is to turn them into like scrappy socks um, and have like a really nice faded pair of socks as well as a nice faded shawl so yeah um i've been putting all of my scraps into a bag and these oh, hang on. apologies for crunchy bags um let's see if i can show these so this is all of the colors that i have left so you can kind of see you kind of see where we're going but yeah I'm really really happy with that um I'm not I've not really thought about advent next year but I am fully on board with the whole yarn advent thing um it was so much fun opening it up every day and um yeah not only fun for me but also fun for my three-year-old who thoroughly enjoyed opening up little parcels of yarn every day <laughs> but um yeah I'm really really happy with how this is turning out and it is so, so enormous. And I, I, have, I don't think I've wrapped this around me yet. Hang on a minute. Oh, this is the colour for day 16. Probably should have showed that earlier. So yeah, it's like this lovely kind of like really pale egg yolk. And then obviously we're going into oranges and then reds. Um, but yeah, this neon, which I think was day 14, I really want like a full skein of that because it's amazing right yeah so this is already like I could I could bind this off now and have a perfectly good shawl out of it but I'm going to carry on going it's going to be all of the cozy like I wish I could keep this on because 
although it's warm in here, like this is just ultimate comfort really, isn't it? This is how I'm gonna be for the majority of the winter, snuggled up on my sofa in this. I also really like the fact that like when I'm out, if I wanna, how does, I feel like Andrea Maori is like the goddess of wearing shawls. She always looks so, like, she always looks so put together in a shawl, whereas I feel like I'm gonna just look like I rolled out of bed. <laughs> but I like the fact that it's kind of the colour scale, the colours of it are really versatile. Like whacking the wall with needles. Um, so yeah, if I wear it like out to do the school run and I've got my jacket zipped up, it looks like I've just got just got a monochrome and then all of a sudden, bam, there's this pop of neon yellow and then there's going to be red further down. So yeah. Ooh. Can't wait to have this. Anyway, now that I have made that difficult to put away, <laughs> I feel like this should sort of show, so I have um, Chow Gu interchangeable needles um, and I've got a couple of extra cords. And so I've got the four inch tips and then these are 90, 93, centimeter or 37 inch cords and I've got two of them connected together and if I spread this out to the point where it, wanna, it wants to lie flat then this is already too big to sit on two did I say 93 or 97 I can't remember Ooh, that wasn't done up. two 93 inch uh, 93 centimeter cords so yeah it's probably going to be bigger than the two metre wingspan that's suggested in the pattern. But you know, like I say, more than happy with the extra width. <laughs> um, so that was whip number one. Whip number two is a pair of socks. Um, and I started these last week, I think. Um, and I'm knitting them two at a time. So these are the part of the wide rib sock set by Summerlee Knits. And I've just put in the heel on both of them. Um, I decided to knit them two at a time because I thought then I'm less likely to end up with the whole, um, like for not being able to finish sock two or sort of slowing down on sock two and it taking forever. Um, like we saw with my Christmas socks, like obviously sock two is not done. So yeah, I've decided to knit them two at a time. And actually I quite enjoy knitting socks two at a time. I like the fact that once you've finished essentially knitting them, then that's it, you've got a whole pair and you don't have to start again. And um, yeah, I kind of, as long as I've not got too many colors to deal with, I find it quite methodic. Um, and as long as I can obviously like, go from the inside and the outside at the same time. I don't find it too annoying. Um, I did knit a pair of socks two at a time when we were in the car on the way to Norfolk, which is about a two and a half hour drive. Um, and yeah, it was really nice to only have to deal with one ball and I can do it without looking, so that's fine. I can't do these as well without looking because they are obviously a ribbed sock and it's like, I don't know, I run out, I, I forget to count and then I, I start talking or watching telly or whatever and then I'm out of, out of sync with the pattern but yeah if it's stocking out I can knit it without really looking at it and these are already in a tangle anyway yarn okay so I'm using Phil Kalana Arvetta in the colour blue atoll for the cuffs heels and toes and then I am using West Yorkshire Spinners signature four ply which if you've been here for a while you'll know is my favourite sock yarn um, it's like a real workhorse sock yarn and um, I am using uh, this sort of self striping which is called Blue Lagoon. Um, I'm using a two millimetre needle which is like my go to for socks. I'm not on gauge for these so I've kind of like, I've knit the um, size where the stitch count 
roughly correlates best to the stitch count that I would usually use for socks. So I am knitting size one in the adult size um, and this is like style four of the sock set so you get four different yeah yeah you get four different styles um in the sock set um and i really like it when you get a sock set and summerlee knits does quite a lot of these and it's it's nice to sort of get loads of variations on what could be quite a simple pattern like a rib sock is quite simple but also I really like the fact that her patterns are written very clearly she's got a book coming out soon and I'm re I've like put it on my wish list um of things that I would like as gifts this year and if I don't get as a gift I will buy it myself um so yeah I have done the heels which is just it's just a standard slip stitch heel and um I'm done one gusset decrease so I'm just going to be carrying on with that and then doing the foot I've got a um, four centimeter cuff on these and then a 16 centimeter leg, um, which, because this is a quite wide rib, it like stretches out and obviously you lose some length in the leg. But yeah, I always need new socks. So I'm looking forward to having these in my sock drawer. Um, I feel like it's been a while since I actually had like a completed new pair of socks. I think the last pair was my Halloween socks with the pumpkins on. So yeah, I'm looking forward to getting these out of stash as well. I'm not the biggest fan of knitting with Arbetta. I know loads of people love it, um, but I find it quite splitty um, when I'm knitting. Um, it might be because I use obviously really thin wooden needles because my sock gauge is just atrocious. Like it's just so loose. Um, I knit in the same way as I do for anything else, but yeah, my sock gauge is so loose, so I always have to go down a needle size, so yeah, two millimetre needles, and I think the recommended for these is 2.25, um, so it's not like going down massively, but yeah, I, I mean, I think if I was to get gauge, I'd probably have to go down even further, but I find it really uncomfortable knitting on anything less than a two millimetre needle, it's very, very kind of harsh on my hands, so yeah, I've just... I've just picked a size that is best for my foot. Um, I think if I was to knit them on gauge, I'd probably have to knit the next size up. So maybe the, is it the medium um, instead of the small or the second size instead of the first? But yeah, not the end of the world. But yeah, I really like the self-striping. There was an option in the pattern to do like a colour block version. And I, was, I saw the pattern and immediately was drawn to it because of the colour block version. And then I had this um, Blue Lagoon and stash. So I thought, oh, well, that's an easier option than having to sew in a load of ends as well. Um, so yeah, that is my newest pair of socks on the needles. Um, and that is it for whips. I've been quite reserved on my whips this, this week. Um, should we do swatches and then do acquisitions? I think my tea is probably completely cold by now. It is. Cold tea is not, not the one. Right, so I've done a little bit of swatching. Um, this one I think you may have seen before. And this is Tesco 220 um, in the colour Jet. And this is for a hoodie for my husband. And um, yeah, if you... If you've been here before, you've probably seen the disaster that I had in the last hoodie that I knit for my husband um, in drops. I forgot what it is. Extra fine merino, which is their superwash DK merino base, and um, yeah, it didn't go. It didn't go to plan. And um, luckily, I don't think I ever really updated you, which is terrible. Um, I was so I did get some wonderful suggestions. Um, from you guys of what to do with it and I'm really really grateful for it um, and I had every intention of trying out all of those suggestions um, however I did speak to my husband about it and sort of like said oh would you be happy with me gifting this because um, our like closest friends had a baby very recently I think she's about a month and a half old now um, she was born at the end of November and obviously got gifts for um, her mother and her, the baby, 
uh, to say welcome to the world and um, it felt a little, me a little bit mean not giving something to our friend so we decided to gift the hoodie to him because he is taller and um, well yeah he's just taller than my husband and so therefore would benefit from the extra length that we got in the sleeves and the body and it fit him like a glove so um, yeah it was really nice to be able to gift that had it not fit him then we would have tried doing the, the putting it in the tumble dryer tricks and everything that everybody suggested to me which also terrifies me however if I have any more issues with um, superwash yarn coming back to bite me then that is the first thing I'm going to turn to anyway so yeah this is for the next version of that and um, I've just used a four millimeter needle I've got some lovely I've got some lovely drape but also it's kind of like robust enough that it can be used as like an outer layer as well which is what my husband uses these for um his kind his one that he's got at the moment his which is like kind of uh light gray has had some mishaps um where it's needed to be mended so i need to get on and cast this on um fairly soon so yeah that is that and i'll just give you a close-up So I love this colour because it's kind of, it's black but it's not, like it's got sort of flecks of like charcoal and everything. Um, so yeah, I like that it's got a bit more depth to it than just a solid black. Um, but yeah, I'm going to be casting that on soon. And then my other swatches, my first one that I'm going to be casting on very soon as well is for a test knit for the lovely Iris of Hyris Makes. And this is for her summer, um, what was it called? Summer Cable Top. I don't think it's actually got an official name yet, but like the test knit and everything is called the Summer Cable Top. And it is absolutely gorgeous. I'll pop a picture of it up here. Um, so I am once again using Phil Kalana Saga in the colour Peach Blossom. I'm actually using the leftovers that I have from my shawl and then um, I ordered one extra ball to make up the yardage. Um, and so yeah, this is my swatch so far. So it's like beautiful cables and eyelets um, and it's so like dainty and I think it's gonna be absolutely beautiful for the spring, especially in this colour with like a pop of pink in the, in the spring. But um, our springs here in the UK are not, they're not always that warm um, so I think like this with a nice cream cardi or something over the top and this is going to be so sort of cosy and snuggly despite being a t-shirt because this is obviously wool and spun. Um, so yeah, not all that great for the summer but I love this design so I think I'll probably knit another one in like a, like a cotton um, and merino blend. I really want to try out the Knitting for Olive um, cotton merino because um, I've never tried it before. I've tried their merino, um, the fingering weight merino, but I've not tried their cotton merino before. Um, and I think, I can't remember what the Sadness Garden one is called. I think it might be Mercy. That could be wrong. Um, <laughs> so I'd quite like to try that out as well. So um, I'd like to knit more, more t-shirts this year, essentially. Um, I get loads of wear out of my colour tip tea and my Friday tea. Um, so yeah want to add more which is why I signed up for this test knit um but yeah it's a negative ease all over cable and eyelet design with um like set in sleeves and I, I just think it's absolutely gorgeous um I really like all of Iris's designs and um, I'm really honoured to be chosen to test knit one of them for her um I went up a needle size for my swatch and I think I'm gonna to have to go down a needle size for my actual garment I'm gonna knit uh, another swatch just to double check um, but the recommended needles are a three millimeter and obviously I went up to a 3.25 for my swatch and I'm gonna go back down um, my yarn is a little bit thinner I think the recommended was um, Santa's Gun Sunday um, which is a little bit um, thicker and it's also um, I think Saga is maybe advertised as a lace weight, whereas t uh, Sunday is actually like a solid fingering weight. Um, but having knit with this before, I know that it blooms beautifully, so I didn't think I was going to have a problem there. Anyway, I went up a needle size because this is slightly thinner than the recommended yarn. Obviously, I don't need to, so I'm going to go back down. Um, 
and yeah so really looking forward to getting this cast on I think I'm going to cast this on this week I'm going to do my other swatch double check my gauge and um cast this on because I think it's going to be imagine this under my dungarees yeah that's all you need obviously not today because it's absolutely freezing but you know um but yeah really looking forward to having this as a lovely little colourful t-shirt for the spring summer I mean actually it's probably going to be too warm for the summer so we'll have to get on and knit that one in the uh, cotton blend um swatch number three is for an older sweater by um Rebecca Clo of the Crayon Bayer again I feel like I'm going through a bit of a phase does anyone else get this where they find a designer like look at all their designs fall in love with all of them and um, then immediately want to cast them all on and start swatching so um, yeah I have a, a design <laughs> by Rebecca Clow on the needles at the moment I have a swatch here and I also have yarn for another one so apologies if you're not a fan of her designs but like, this is just what I am knitting um, but yeah this is for the older sweater um, here we is the swatch And this is using um, BC Garn Loch Lomond in, in, <laughs> in um, I have it written down, Pine Tree and Sand. So Pine Tree is obviously the green and there's kind of like pinky beige colour is um, called Sand. And it's got like flecks of red in there as well, um, which I didn't expect when I bought it, but I love, it's just, yeah, I think I might be holding this upside down. No, I'm not, it is this way. But yeah, that is my swatch. And once again, I think I'm gonna have to go down a needle size. So um, I swatched on the recommended 3.75s and um, I think I'm going to have to go down to a 3.5 because my gauge is off. I also swatched, I did all of my swatches whilst I was ill and I have not knit this swatch big enough. So I'm going to do another swatch, a needle size down, on so on a 3.5 and um, double check my gauge. Because <laughs> like, so you get a swatching guide in both this pattern and obviously um, in the cable top pattern as well. And I, I just... Like I worked out how many times I was going to have to do the repeat of the cable, of, not the cable, of the um, swatch guide um, in the older sweater pattern. And then I just didn't do enough repeats. I thought I was like, I found this a lot whilst I was ill. My brain just was not, it was not running at full speed. <laughs> and so, yeah, I've um, like, I have managed to work out what my gauge is, but I would much rather have a much larger swatch because this isn't even 10 centimeters long it's like it's fine on stitches but for my row gauge which is always the thing that is out i was just like no i need to know <laughs> so i think i'm gonna go down a needle size and and um and re-swatch to figure out what my gauge is on a 3.5 obviously i should not swatch whilst whilst poorly <laughs> but yeah um I mean, I'm quite happy with this fabric. It has got lovely drape, um, but I don't know. I think I I want to see what it is, what it's like in this yarn at a small, at like more on gauge. Because I could knit this in size one and get roughly the measurements for size two. But I'm kind of at a point where I'd I'd be at the I'd be in an odd space. So if I knit size two, then I get like. I get more than the recommended ease. If I knit size one, then I don't get enough ease. So I don't know. I've not really made a decision on what size I want to knit this at. I mean, I think I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to see if on a 3.5, I'm going to, so my gauge, my swatch gauge, sorry, my stitch gauge is 20.5 stitches and the recommend, uh, sorry, and the pattern wants 22 stitches, but my row gauge is 26 rows um and the pattern wants 29 so if i can get row gauge or like closer to row gauge with a 3.5 millimeter millim 
millimeter needle um then i will knit at that something is making a horrible noise i think someone's car outside apologies um yeah so i will knit this um if my row gauge is closer to 29 rows per 10 centimeters on a 3.5 then i will just knit on a 3.5 and um like work out what my stitch gauge is going to give me if it gives me kind of I don't know if it yeah because I think that will put me between if I knit size one it'll give me more like size two I don't know I don't really know what I'm trying to say essentially I want something that's between size one and size two. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna see what the fabric is like on a 3.5. See what my row, ga row gauge is and probably knit it on a 3.5. Um, because although I like this, I feel like I'm gonna end up with, cause it's, um, cause it's, I'd, I'd have to like fiddle around with the instructions for the stitch pattern to get my underarm gauge and everything, uh, underarm gauge, underarm depth and everything. Otherwise it's either gonna be like right up here or way too low. So yeah, I'm gonna see what it's like on the smaller needle, see where I get, and then kind of work out what I need to do to get the circumference that I want. That was a very long-winded way of saying that. <laughs> um, and also I was distracted by two birds having a fight out the window. Cause you know, that's just, it's just it really, isn't it? <laughs> Today is the first day that everything's kind of gone back to normal and I feel like I'm all over the place still. Um, and also because like routine has meant that I'm filming this on a Monday instead of a Tuesday. So, you know, we're, we just we just go with it. Everything's always a bit chaotic around here. Right. So that was all of my swatches as well. Um, so we are into acquisitions. So I've already spoken about the fact that obviously I ordered more of the um, Saga in Peach Blossom. And I ordered that from Knit Yarns. And she was having a sale over the um Christmas break and um I ordered some other things as well so first off I got three balls of Filconana Pernilla in this um this is not focused on that it's focused on me there we go so yeah it's like this really light grey kind of melange um colourway and um, it's color 957. I think it is called Very Light Gray or something like that. I essentially got this because I couldn't get marzipan. And actually I'm glad that I got the gray in the end because I think it's gonna work out much better for what I wanna use it for. So I got three balls of this um, to knit a Daft Days cardigan by um, Rebecca Clo and um, if you're not familiar with the pattern, I will pop a picture up here. So it is an all over striped cardigan with a round neck. Um, and um, she knit her first sample out of an advent. I think it was the sad vent from Nervous Fibres. Um, and if you've been here before, you will know that I knit a striped sweater out of a load of minis that I got from Laura at The Lonely Knitter, which was her... It was the Game of Thrones, what did she call it? Ice and Fire, that was it. So it was out of her Ice and Fire um, collection. And they look a bit like this now. So these are all the leftovers from my striped sweater. Um, this was the 100 gram skein of Hold the Door that I had. And they're all in here. This is not going to show particularly well because they've all now fallen to the bottom. But yeah, they're all like, um, so I got the tonals and I got the variegated um, minis. And I've got varying amounts of these left over. I think almost, I think I've got 15 grams at least of all of them. And for size one of this cardigan, it uses 10 grams or so for the body and then five grams for each of the sleeves. So I'm going to double check all of my notes from my pattern page on Ravelry of my striped sweater to make sure I know. 
to make sure I know what the yardages of, uh, sorry, what the weights of all of these minis are. And um, then I'm going to use them for the stripes alongside this um, panilla that I got. Because I think, as far as I remember, so the, the shawl is fingering weight and then the cardigan is DK. So yeah, it's going to be kind of like, yeah work really well on the contrast because one of them like some of them are quite light and um, like and one of them is almost white because obviously I when I knit my stripes I used this one as a whole skein um, and the contrast between these stripes and like say this one which is Little Dove it's just not particularly high and although you can see it in the in my striped sweater it's like I wanted something with a little, little bit more high contrast so I'm very very glad that they didn't have the marzipan because it me meant that I went looking for a grey and so I'm looking forward to having that as like a spring cardigan maybe to wear with this maybe I don't know so yeah I got three balls of the panilla and it's um it's like the DK weight version of the Peruvian Highland wool, I think. Um, it's 100% yeah, 100 100 Peruvian Highland wool, 175 metres per 50 grams. And um, yeah, I love the Peruvian Highland wool from Volcalana. Loud man. And um, so I'm looking forward to giving this a try. I've not used it before. So yeah, should be nice as a really colourful cardigan to have. And... Secondly, I got nine balls of the Gepard, 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 I feel like I'm saying this wrong, I'm overthinking it, but yeah, I got nine balls of Gepard Woolia, which is something that I have been wanting to try out for a little while, and um, I got it in the colour olive, and um, I love a green, um, and I don't really feel like I have enough green in my wardrobe. And um, I have no, <laughs> I have no idea what to use this for. I have no plans for it yet. Um, I just, I really wanted to try it and because it was on sale, I thought, oh, I'll get it now. Um, and then it can just sit in my stash and then when something pops up, I'll have it there ready. So I got nine balls and these are 133 meters per 50 grams. So that is, yes, yeah, so I have 1,197 meters obviously can't do fast maths <laughs> so yeah um if you have any ideas of what I can knit with 1197 meters of roughly kind of like I'd say it's like DK to worsted because it's it's like semi worsted spun I have no idea what that means um but it's really lovely and sort of it's soft but not really soft like it is merino but it's not yeah, I don't know, it's, it's got a little bit more wooliness to it than say, like, I'm trying to think of something that's just standard super wash merino, uh, non super wash merino. But yeah, it's got a little, little bit more wooliness in it than other merinos that I've felt, which is really nice. Um, yeah, it's a non super wash merino, so um, yeah, I don't know. I'm just really, I think this colour is going to be really lovely. Um, obviously, you can see that I have a thing with this kind of colour of green <laughs> but yeah so I have no intentions for this but got a sweaters quantity of it nonetheless because why not um and that is not it I have one more which has disappeared so I also got um in the woolly knit sale and um, that they were having over Christmas it was their boxing day sale but it went on for I think it might st even still be on now. I'll have to double check that. But anyway, um, I got 10 balls of the four ply uh, Superwash Merino and I got this in the color, what is this? Rose pink. And um, I got 10 balls of this for like 17 pound 50. It is insane how much. So if they're 50 gram balls, so I got 500 grams. And um, I got this with the intention of knitting my daughter a festival dress. So I knit her a 
Dagmar's dress by Petite Knit um, for Christmas, but I knit it in like August, so it was before I started the podcast. And she obviously opened that on Christmas Day and absolutely loves it, asks to wear it more often than not. So I um, have decided that I'm going to knit her more dresses because she really enjoys wearing them. So yeah, I got this and then I've probably got some white superwash merino somewhere full ply sitting around somewhere that I can use for the like little bobbly bits she has a festival sweater already but that's like a um the sweater is a DK yeah the sweater is DK and the dress is fingering so yeah I got this um in the full ply base from Woolly Knit this is so soft like you can definitely feel the difference between this and the like merino cone that they do this is definitely because i don't i don't know if the merino cone is superwash i can't remember um but yeah this is um a superwash merino which i always think is quite good for kids garments because she does obviously do things with like play-doh and painting and that kind of thing and i don't want to stress about the fact that it's going to get stuff on it although we use all like water-based paints and water-based pens and everything like that i think it would come out in a hand wash but the ability to be able to chuck it in the washing machine is really nice um so yeah, I got um, 10 balls of this and it's 180 meters or 200 yards per 50 grams. And it's just a lovely like solid rose pink. Um, I think it's gonna be a lovely little dress for her. And um, as I was going downstairs to go and grab one of these that I uh, thought I hadn't bought upstairs, postman came and he delivered more yarn to me <laughs> because uh, didn't realise how much I bought before Christmas and because quite a lot of it was from like hand dyers um, and indie dyers I it obviously didn't get shipped until January because they rightfully took Christmas off because it's Christmas um, and like small businesses deserve a break as well so um, yeah I got got some more yarn and all of the yarn that I have coming at the moment is intended for some gifts I think one, I think one skein maybe for me and everything else is for gifts. But um, yes, you will have seen in the last episode that I knit a muscle bra hat for my sister for Christmas. And whilst I was knitting that, my daughter wanted one. Um, and so I got this beautiful skein of um, hand dyed sock yarn from a company called Wildflower Yarn, which is one that I found on Etsy. Um, I think they're based up in Liverpool. Um, I'll put a link to them down below as well as everything else that I mentioned. And um, this is on their Sparkle Sock Base and it's called Unicorn Farts. And it's just absolutely stunning. I have literally just opened this. Um, and just look at that. It's gorgeous. Um, and so this is 100 grams, 400 meters or 436 yards. Um, it's 75% superwash merino, 20% nylon and 5% silver stellina. And this is the first time I will be using like a, um, a sparkle base. Um, and this is for a hat for my daughter who is, she's like three and three quarters. She's nearly four now, which I have no idea how that happened. Um, and she is gonna absolutely love this, love this. I think. Like, this is everything that a three and a half year old girl wants, really, isn't it? Sparkly, rainbow, unicorn farts. <laughs> but yeah, um, I'm really, really happy with this. And first time ever, I got some extras in the in the parcel. Um, I got some tea, which this happens for everybody, I assume, because like, she has no idea who I am, and I am nobody. Um, and I got a little um, stitch marker which says made with love which is very very sweet I don't know if that's going to focus maybe I don't know either way yeah that's really lovely um so yeah there we go that is everything um to show you and the last thing I have to talk about is like my knitting goals for 2024 so I'm going to kind of speed through them they're not really very exciting um first one is to knit more socks which you will see um 
I have already started with. Um, I want to fill up my sock yarn, sock yarn. No, I want to fill up my sock drawer this year, um, and also my husband's sock drawer. So essentially, just knit more socks. So you'll see some fairly consistent sock knitting from me. Hopefully, um, I like to try out new patterns a lot. My husband is very set on his like preferred sock patterns. So you've already seen that it was the thick giving socks from Summerly Knits. Sorry, she has a thickness and a thick giving socks sets and his preferred is the Thanksgiving, the vanilla set from the Thanksgiving set. So you'll see more of those popping up and um, I will be trying out more sock patterns for myself um, over the next year. I, my aim is to have one pair of socks for myself per month, so 12 pairs of socks. Um, but I'd also tried that last year and I ended up with 10 pairs of socks in total for everybody. And um, not all of them were for me so we're just going to see how it goes i'm not putting any stress on myself to get 12 pairs of socks done but yeah if you would like to join me then do let me know um in knitting 12 pairs of socks for the year but i know it's a lot of pairs of socks for everybody so you know we're gonna try and i have no idea how well that's gonna go but we shall see um my second goal is to add more colorful knits to my wardrobe um, I realise that I'm not very good at neutrals. I prefer colours and then when I'm going to buy yarn, I chicken out and I buy some. I buy a grey. And this year I really want to try and make sure that I actually buy the colours that I want to wear and don't chicken out and just buy a grey. Because the thing is, I have grey knits and I have like dark knits and neutral knits in my like knitwear drawer. And... I don't wear them as much as I wear my colourful ones. Like I wear this a lot more and I wear my stripes and like that's what I want to wear. And I don't always have that available because I've chickened out on my yarn choices. And so I am trying to do the hand talk again, aren't I? Um, I'm trying to push myself to knit more colourful knits this year. Um, so I have the wardrobe that I want and not the wardrobe that I I don't know, I don't know what the end of that was going to be. I have the wardrobe that I want and not the wardrobe that I um, have chickened out and ended up with. So, yep, that was number two. Number three is to knit more for my husband. Um, he had a couple of knits fail on him this year. Um, not fail on him, but like they got overworn and um, have had to have a couple of fixes done to them. And so to for him to have more available in his rotation I've decided I want to knit more for him this year um so yeah if you want to come along with me whilst I knit some more menswear items then welcome um number three no that was number three number four is to knit more cardigans I feel like I don't have enough cardigan options in my wardrobe I have two um so yeah I have one that I have knit up in a um in drops brush doll packer so it's a really fluffy blue like a um steel blue and i don't wear that very often because i wear blue jeans and blue dungarees and everything and then i have my um jacket number one which is in gray and it's like well again the colorful knits thing i want more color in my wardrobe and so and i also want more cardigans because i want to be able to layer so yeah number four is to knit more cardigans Number five, and my final one, is to support more small businesses, so dyers, designers, and like independent yarn shops. I do quite often find myself just going straight to like Wool Warehouse and Lovecrafts because I know that I'm going to get a selection there that I know of and they like sell big brands and everything. But this year, I really want to make sure that I am buying more from independent yarn shops because they generally they have a lot more of the brands of yarn that I want to knit with like obviously Gepard and Filkalana and I think the Loch Lamond that I got was from Tangle Johns and that kind of thing so I don't have a, t a ton of local yarn shops around me so the ability to, uh, to shop online from smaller independent yarn shops is there and I, sh I want to take advantage of that more this year. Also, I want to buy from more independent dyers. I bought a lot from Laura from the Lonely Knitter last year and she does have absolutely gorgeous yarn, but I want to branch out this year and buy from 
more independent dyers. Um, what else? Oh, and I also want to support more sort of smaller independent um, designers this year as well. And yeah, so that is all of my 2024 knitting goals and we will see how many of those I can stick to and um, actually um, end up with some good stuff of, no, what am I trying to say? See how many of those I can stick to and um, how much I get out of those throughout the year and we will look back at them at the end of 2024 and then maybe set some more goals for 2025 which is a horrible thing to think about at the beginning of 2024 um but yeah I would love to know what your knitting goals are for the year if you've got any please do let me know um because I always like to add to them as well I feel like I feel like it's very easy to fall into a thing of like set a load of goals at the beginning of the year and then not set any more or that kind of thing and feel like you can't change them and just feel like they're not really very flexible um but yeah I think that's all from me I hope you have a wonderful two weeks hope you get lots of knitting done and um, if you have enjoyed this video then please do hit the like button or subscribe if you want to see more from me I don't think I've ever said that before <laughs> but yeah please do like and subscribe if you want to um obviously there's no pressure <laughs> Um, and thanks so much for watching and I will catch you all in two weeks. Happy knitting!